George Burns is, is a phenomenon. Uh, at the age of 93, uh, I would guess he is probably certainly America's oldest active entertainer. And the amazing thing is, I guess the greatest success that George had came in the last 20, 23 years of his life. Um, he's still entertaining, shows no signs of slowing down. And if I'm right, Irving, doesn't he have a date to play the London Palladium on his 100th birthday? That's right. And I think he's going to make it. Would you welcome Mr. George Burns? What number of cigar is this for you today now? This is my uh, 10th or 11th cigar. I smoke between 15 and 20 cigars a day. Yeah. And it's very exciting. Yeah. At, 90, <laughs> at 93, if I can get it into a holder. <laughs> well, it's, it's the little things in life, not yours. <laughs> <laughs> Hasn't your doctor said to you, now, George, you got My doctor is dead. <laughs> the hell with him, huh? I play bridge in the afternoon until about 3 o'clock. Then I go home, go to bed, and um, i got to be very careful when I go to bed. Yeah. So I, I don't wake her up. <laughs> Sneak into bed. And I uh, get up at 5.30, have a double martini, and maybe more. I stay home. Yeah. I, I drink a little bit. Yeah. But I, when I got a cold, I don't drink. Uh -huh. I don't smoke. I do the other thing. Though. Oh, you don't. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you're looking forward to your next cold soon, huh? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I read the book the other night. It's a marvelous book. It's not a good book. It's a great book. It's called All My Best Friends. And it is about all the marvelous entertainers you've worked with all of your life. I wish I'd have known a lot of these people. I didn't know Al Jolson at all. I, I knew Eddie Cantor and I knew Groucho. But they used to sit at the same table. The, uh, Jolson and Cantor and the Marx Brothers and Danny Kay and Georgie Jessel. And, uh, I'm the only one left. You're the only one I know that's alive. <laughs> Now, that was, that was the famous, I guess, uh, round table or the table at Hillcrest Country Club, Hillcrest right? Hillcrest Country Club, yeah. I would say that the funniest guy at the table, well, Groucho was funny, you know, but uh, uh, Georgie Jessel. Now, a lot of people wouldn't know that. Yeah. But I, I, I agree with you. Jessel said funny things. I'm sitting there having coffee at 9 o'clock in the morning, and I'm watching Jessel at the bar. Third brandy at 9 o'clock in the morning. I went over, I said, Georgie, is that your third brandy? At he says, haven't you heard? I said, what? He says, Norma Talmadge left me. I said, but Norma Talmadge left you 35 years ago. He says, I still miss her. <laughs> Let's talk about that. <laughs> Let's talk about Al Jolson a little bit. Okay. Uh, now, you say in his book, you thought he probably was the greatest entertainer, and Jolson was not a, uh, miss letting you know he was the world's greatest entertainer. Well, he was. He was yeah. the greatest. He wasn't, wasn't the greatest talent. Yeah. But the greatest entertainer. Look, they were, they were Jolson, Jewish boy. My father was a Jewish cantor. And he used to blacken up and get down on one knee and sing, I got a mammy in Alabama, and made the people cry. You know, you've got to be great to do that. <laughs> <laughs> didn't, didn't Jessel once say about Jolson, I saw it when Jessel did his stage show once, he says, he said, Jolson never got any further south than Baltimore. He said he had a bad plate of chitlins, threw up, and went back to New York. I think Jolson said that. Maybe not like that, but he said that. I'll tell you a story about Jolson. During World War I, they have a benefit performance at Ned Wayburn's Theater in Columbus Cycle. And on the show was Sam Bernard, Louis Mann, um, George M. Cohan, and William Collier did. And George M. Cohan sang over there for the first time. And then Caruso came out and sang Pagliacci. And then out came Jolson. What do you think he said? You ain't heard nothing yet. Is that where that started? <laughs> you ain't heard nothing. And it was a riot. I mean, there was no, that nobody liked Jolson. Is it true? Jolson would be working and he would see somebody or hear a line that he liked in somebody else's act. He'd take it. He would take it. And then some of his people would go to the guy and say, Same Mr. Jolson, that's Mr. Jolson's right. line? Was, yeah. Take it out of your act? Also, Jolson... <laughs> When you were on the stage on the same show with Jolson, Jolson had the water running. He didn't want to hear you get laughs. So You're anything. kidding. Oh, yeah. 
We were in, 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 in Denver, Gracie and I. We were a little man and woman night. We were on number three. And Bombo was playing in Denver. And we got two tickets, ran over, never took off our makeup, got to the theater around 9, 9, 10 minutes after 9, no Jolson. 9.30, no Jolson. Quarter to 10, no. finally the audience is applauding. Jol Jolson came out with snow all over. It was snowing in Denver. He said, I'm sorry, I was at somebody's house for dinner. I got carried away. He says, do you mind if I put on my makeup right here? And he stripped from here up, put on his makeup, told a few jokes, and Jolson was a great comedian, great right. light comedian, but people didn't appreciate that because his singing was so great. Right. And Bombo went on. Bombo was on for 10 minutes when he said to the audience, do you know that story? The horse wins the race, the fella gets the girl. You want that? You want me to entertain you? I said, entertain us. He brought out the cast. He said, you... You girls got dates? Three or four had dates. He said, go ahead. The rest sit down on the floor. He entertained the audience from 10 o'clock that night till 1 in the morning. And then he said, I'm going to take off my makeup, and I'm going next door there's a, in the restaurant. There's a piano. Right. I'll meet you, and then I'll sing a few songs. <laughs> Everybody else. You know, nobody can do that. I wish I'd have seen him. Oh. That must have been sensational. Great. That's great. You once, sir, uh, you got, a, got Groucho mad, or you offended him at one time, didn't well, you? Well, I didn't mean to get him mad. Edward G. Robinson gave a dinner party. Right. <laughs> about, about eight or ten people. And one woman said, who's the funniest comedian? I said, Charlie Chaplin. <laughs> and Groucho said, he's not the funniest comedian. I am. I said, well, Groucho, if he's the funniest comedian, then I must be the funniest comedian because I'm funnier than you are. <laughs> and I said, and I did it without my brothers. <laughs> got very mad and the next day he wrote an article in the paper he said Jack Benny is a very talented fella and George Burns wears a toupee <laughs> later on you you, you, were, you were friends well we, we got to be friends yeah. but Groucho was fearless if, if you said something and Groucho topped it and if that same thing came on 20 times that day he topped it with the same joke now Sophie Tucker used to sing if you can't see mama every night you can't see mama at all <laughs> and Thank care. Yeah. And when, whenever you ordered sea bass, Groucho would say, if you can't see bass every night, you can't see bass at all. <laughs> that is not, nobody's going to steal that joke. That's right. That's not a great joke. <laughs> but after you've heard it for 17 years, you got tired of it. Right. So I came to the table, there was sea bass. Well, I love sea bass, but I didn't want to hear that, for God, that lousy joke. <laughs> I whispered, I whispered to the waiter, I says, I'll have sea bass. And the waiter whispered back, if you can't see bass. You can't see bass at all. Okay. Oh, that's marvelous. Does it seem that your good friend uh, Jack Benny has been gone as long as he has? He was my closest friend. I know he was. Yeah, he's a wonderful man. Why was, why were, was he such an easy mark for you? Well, because if you told Jack Benny a joke, you wouldn't laugh. Yeah. Well, so, well, Jack Benny brought all these things on himself. Jack Benny signed a contract for a couple of million dollars. He was at the club. He looked excited. I walked over to him. I knew he signed the contract. I said, Jack, you look excited. He says, I am. I, if I was downtown and I found out that if you, okay, you get into a car and if you go 25 mile, 26 miles a day, 26 miles an hour, you miss every red light. Here's a guy that signed a $2 million contract, and he misses every red light. <laughs> and then he said to me once at the club, he says, did you take a shower today? He says, take one. The, the, uh, the, the, the towels are fluffy. Fluffy towels. <laughs> then he said, uh, did you take a shine today? Shoe shine. The yeah. boy gives you the world's greatest sh shine. I said, I'll give him one shoe. If I like it, I'll give him the other one. <laughs> you know, I'd heard you do those so things thanks. about Jack, and I never believed it. About everything was great. The towels were the great. Uh, he'd say he'd go to a restaurant. It was the greatest cup of coffee he'd ever yeah. had in his life. Be, be, be. He says he never had a good cup of coffee. Right. I says, if you never had a good cup of coffee, how can you tell this is bad? You know. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> we, were, we were sitting at the Brown Derby, and the waiter came over. I said, I'll have bacon and eggs for lunch. He says, I'll have cream of wheat. He says, and I hate cream of wheat. I said, why do you order cream of wheat? He says, Mary says it's good for me. I said, tell Mary to eat cream of wheat. <laughs> I said, I'm going to have bacon and eggs. He said, I'm, I, he said, I love bacon and eggs. I said, why don't you have bacon and eggs? He said, Mary says it's bad for me. I said, tell Mary not to eat bacon and eggs. <laughs> then the waiter came over. He said, well, I, 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 bacon and eggs. And Jack says, I'll have bacon and eggs. I said, when the check comes, give it to Jack Benny. I said, why? He said, why should I pay for the check? 
I says, if you don't pay for the check, I'll tell Mary I beg it. <laughs> This is for you today now. This is my uh, 10th or 11th cigar. I smoke between 15 and 20 cigars a day. Yeah. And it's very exciting. Yeah. At, 90, <laughs> at 93, if I can get it into a holdup. <laughs> well, it's, it's the little things. In George Burns is, is a phenomenon. Uh, at the age of 93, uh, I would guess he is probably certainly America's oldest active entertainer. And the amazing thing is, I guess, the greatest success that George had came in the last 20, 23 years of his life. Um, he's still entertaining, shows no signs of slowing down. And if I'm right, Irving, doesn't he have a date to play the London Palladium on his 100th birthday? That's right. And I think he's going to make it. Would you welcome Mr. George Burns? What number of cigar is... And um, i got to be very careful when I go to bed. Yeah. So I, I don't wake her up. <laughs> Sneak into bed. And I uh, get up at 5.30, have a double martini, and maybe more. I stay home. Yeah. I, I drink a little bit. Yeah. But I, when I got a cold, I don't drink. Uh -huh. I don't smoke. All right, not yours. <laughs> <laughs> Hasn't your doctor said to you, not George? You My doctor is dead. <laughs> I play bridge in the afternoon until about 3 o'clock. Then I go home, go to bed.